Hello, everybody. Um, tonight, I wanted to talk about uh, essentially what the best chess computers are in the world. Um, and uh, here is kind of a histogram. So I, I came across this list here, um, which is run by this organization called the uh, Chess Engine Grand Tournament. And it looked pretty legit. Um, there's quite a number of games here. Um, 150,000, basically 100 games or so, um, and it had some ratings that I liked and uh, looked interesting. So basically, here is kind of the graph. Um, you know, there's a couple of interesting things here. So on the lower end, um, you have a few more chess computers, um, and then on the high end, you have these guys. So uh, the interesting thing is that uh, this does not look like the human diagram. Um, this is kind of centered right around here. Um, and this would be an interesting point between uh, essentially 2,900 and 3,000. So uh, the question is, uh, what's going on? So um, why would some computers be essentially less than this number and more than this number? So we're kind of looking for this number around uh, 2,916 uh, or so. Um, so I, I grabbed that list. Um, and you can kind of see right around in here is this difference, right? So that is that, guys. So, uh, but in particular, if you graph them on a kind of a linear graph here, everybody, you can kind of see there's, uh, it's pretty straightforward, maybe till about here. Um, but uh, uh, particularly when you get to this, uh, under this range, so these these guys, there's kind of a different uh, list here. So I'm not even sure what to think about this. I try to do this on a log graph um, to get a little bit more visibility. And you kind of see here at 3,000, so there's kind of like this uh, point here. Um, and basically what I'd like to do is try to figure out what it is that causes that. Um, we'd have to look at the source code. I have some copies of the source code. Um, in this discussion tonight, and uh, I'm not sure how far we're going to get into the uh, source code, but I'd like to maybe make a separate video on that. I'll try to get into it a little bit. Um, but this is pretty nice. You can see uh, they have a bunch of other lists here. I did grab the uh, Blitz wrist, so you can kind of click on one of these and get whichever one you want. Um, I did the 3-1 and compared that to the uh, 40-120. So it's kind of a little different. What this means is you have to add a couple seconds every move. So it's you get 25 minutes plus 8 seconds every time you move. Um, so it would be interesting to kind of compare these. Um, we can maybe even grab this. It does list some of the time controls and details about the processors um, involved. Um, and uh, here is kind of this list here. So that main list, um, you can see that this is not the same. Um, you don't even see, uh, surprisingly, we don't even see uh, stockfish on this list. So this is uh, kind of a surprise. Maybe they didn't uh, play enough games. Actually, it looks like quite a number of games here. So this is 1,600 games. Um, and... Uh, on this list, all versions, so you do see Stockfish, but not quite enough games. So maybe, gosh, I'm not even sure what to say about this. So maybe it's better to uh, use this other list. Let me grab that and uh, graph it really quick. Um, so here is that list um, from that other website. This is the, put the 25 minutes with eight. And again, that's 1,600 games, so quite a number of games. So you can kind of see um, that uh, this Komodo Dragon program, and then there's this F S F N N U E, and uh, it's kind of funny they put the 2008 28 year times 64. So uh, I'm actually gonna have to add these guys to my uh, list. So originally, what I did is I looked at Stockfish, this LC Zero, and Komodo. Um, the nice thing about Stockfish is we have the access to the source code. And I also have uh, Houdini and some other ones that we can uh, look at. But I'm going to do a quick look up for these guys uh, just as a check. 
<clears throat> okay, so actually it has to do with <clears throat> it, this name of the computer here uh, on the top here actually has to do with Stockfish. So it still is Stockfish, but they have a slight tweak to their code. So you got to realize that these uh, these lists are actually published in November. Well, this was June. So the last one, I think, was, yes, yeah, so this is 18th of November. So these are updated very often. Uh, it looks like quite often. So, uh, but in the details here, basically, it combines the brute force computing approach of the regular Stockfish program. And then it does some neural network chess engines similar to Alpha Zero and uh, this uh, LC Zero. So we do, we are going to look at both of those. And it looks like it analyzes 50 million positions per second, um, which is half the speed of traditional Stockfish, but 500 times the speed of Layla Chess. Well, okay, so. If you're analyzing that many positions, yeah, maybe you could win. But uh, again, uh, there's some kind of like uh, uh, analysis here. It looks like uh, wins and losses and so on. So you can see uh, zeros and wins and stockfish. So it looks like under this particular one, LC01 and stockfish, maybe got a number two on this just by a hair. So it's like three games. And you can see how close this is. So it's like 200 and 400. So they basically lost. Uh, they lost exactly half. The, well, it's it's a 50-50. So most of these are draws. So uh, not sure what that means, but it's an interesting. Uh, I love this diagram. It just kind of shows uh, what's going on and then the actual number. So you can see uh, Stockfish. Um, the regular stockfish doing slightly worse just by a couple games and you might even wonder why this guy won so we're gonna try to understand um, why this is um, and basically look at the details for um, basically what's going on so they're saying that this is a uh, quite a remarkable improvement and you can see well, it's maybe just a few games out of 400 difference, but uh, but in, in essence, any win is kind of a big deal. Uh, it would have to be studied very carefully and understood, and a loss, of course, would be uh, on the opposite side if you the other guy would need to study it as well, so even more. Um, but there's a lot of details here, um, but in general... Um, <clears throat> So this stockfish says that it's number one, at least right now. Maybe those are older data points. And you can see this this other guy, number two. And actually, LC0 kind of being a little bit pretty far behind in this uh, sense. So 100 points is is very significant. So uh, we can look at that. Uh, you can kind of see what this means. So on the uh, ELL rating system, what I found on the Wikipedia page, there's a very good example that gives all the details exactly as you need so if you try to understand this 100 points basically means you're at about 65 percent win rate and if you're 200 points you're about at 75 percent win rate so that's a 10 percent gain over 200 points so 100 points is a lot actually um i remember playing a lot of people and it was close and sometimes you know, they would win every once in a while, but I would win, you know, every once in a while plus a little bit. And it really feels like a little bit is a lot sometimes. Um, and basically, that's what we see here. So under the actual games, so this you can kind of see just LC0 being slightly ahead. So this is a longer game. And then even on this, you can see LC0 is back behind again. So depending on how you think of it, um, this kind of maybe forces you to really, essentially a 25-8 might affect the mid game, which is really the most important part of the game. Um, so it may be best to just look at the uh, slowest 
traditional tournament numbers. Um, but we're really looking at these very top guys. And I'll, I'll just graph the top ones really so on the uh, ELL rating system, what I found on the Wikipedia page, there's a very good example that gives all the details exactly as you need. So if you try to understand this, 100 points basically means you're at about 65% win rate. And if you're 200 points, you're about at 75% win rate. So that's a 10% gain over 200 points. So 100 points is a lot, actually. Um, I remember playing a lot of people and it was close and sometimes, you know, they would win every once in a while, but I would win, you know, every once in a while plus a little bit. And it really feels like a little bit is a lot sometimes. Um, and basically that's what we see here. So under the actual games, so this you can kind of see just... LC0 being slightly ahead. So this is a longer game. And then even on this, you can see LC0 is back behind again. So depending on how you think of it, um, this kind of maybe forces you to really, essentially a 25-8 might affect the mid game, which is really the most important part of the game. Um, so it may be best to just look at the uh, slowest traditional tournament numbers. Um, but we're really looking at these very top guys. And I'll, I'll just graph the top ones. Really. So uh, back here. So you can kind of see basically LC0. So uh, these looked like there was a slight difference between the... Uh, June numbers and November numbers. So essentially these are really tight and I would love to hear precisely what the answer is, but essentially this is kind of suggesting that neural networks were slightly better, uh, which is quite amazing. Um, I really want to see the source code um, now just to double check on that. Um, but uh, you know, so it, it, it's just uh, it's just really tough to say uh, which is better. So at the very top, so we're basically talking about 20 point difference between each of those. So if you go back to this, 20 points is going to put you just slightly on the 50, which is basically right in here. So it's pretty tight. Um, in general but each one of these points if you're playing you know a thousand games 1600 games you know uh one percent of those is going to be about 16 wins um 10 to 16 say um and uh then there's all the computers that they played so it's not you know maybe one computer might be quite good at a certain particular type of game uh, that was very low or, or lower on the list. So something to think about. Um, and uh, so basically, I wasn't really sure when I first started doing this, um, what is the uh, best uh, chess tournament. So that data didn't even show up on Wikipedia, but this is the unofficial World Chess Computer Championship. And it's been run since basically 2010. Um, and uh, you can see that they uh, basically have the structure of the competition here. Um, and uh, we can read through this carefully. Um, so perhaps one of the uh, most debatable concepts here is that, uh, you know, all the chess engines, this is the undebatable part, well, they're all running on mostly the same hardware um, and they use the same opening book so that's the part I don't really like um, it's a good idea for them to use the same opening book but the problem is it should not in my opinion to really be the best chess computer in the world you shouldn't use anything including a human opening book because it could be wrong partially right so that what they've done is they've also added this criteria which I think is great at a large large pages are disabled. So for example, 
you might spend months or years calculating what the positions are and just save the entire page history of you know the possibilities and believe it or not that's kind of possible to do um, I've seen certain games that are just unbelievable and you're just like how did you win that and if that was all calculated for months and years yeah that's great but it's kind of nice to just see what the computer can do as a fresh calculation and end game table bases I mean there's some basic stuff that you should just know and in a lot of ways I think even that's wrong um, so really if I were to redo this tournament I would say in essence you want the computers to be able to just do the calculations right there on the spot and not have opening books no end game table bases and essentially uh, have some no of uh, these like pre-calculated uh, tables so I don't know why they do that the reason that they say this in my opinion is that they could pre-program a neural network so they could train a neural network or train some kind of a table to kind of estimate so based on thousands or millions of games they could just pre-program it that way as well so it's kind of cheating to do it that way um, but in some ways if you really understand the fine print of that so for example if you have you know a uh, kind of like a hash table or a, some kind of data structure that tells you for a particular position or a particular mid game or or so on so uh, if it matches you could say hey these are the typical ideal moves um, after looking at like the computer plays itself and it says uh, I've played a million games like this looks like all the possibilities have been wiped out in general this this table looks good so it's probably bad to have something like that we want to you know and I've looked at the code for uh, I think it was crafty or uh, these others. So, for example, like you might program in the value of a knight or the value of a bishop, and under what circumstances is a bishop slightly better than a knight, or are they exactly identical, or which type of pawns are better, and under certain circumstances. So, in general, you know the problem with that is that then then it kind of gets down to just uh, anyway, it, it, it's a debate. So, uh, how you actually do this looks like there's still some. I mean, just because they're using opening books and have endgame tables and large large pages are disabled, it sounds like, so is a small page enabled? You know, stuff like that. So uh, it sounds to me like it's not perfect yet and there's still some work to be done. Um, and these are some details. I didn't quite understand all of them. It seems like essentially they have uh, seasons, right? And you kind of go through and, uh, you, you, you know, they have different rules for each of these seasons. So these are kind of the winners sorted by the most recent. So Stockfish, Stockfish, LC0, Stockfish, LC0, Stockfish. And so you can see that the actual win was by 14. So I would like to know that, I guess it's out of probably 70 nine games and they were plus 14 on those so it looks like in general total games is close to 70 so it might be interesting to kind of graph the win rate here um, but in general <clears throat> stockfish is doing really well and it's great news that that's the case because stockfish code is open source now they write these version numbers here and these would have to have a specific meaning i'm sure there's some kind of byte code where this means, and you can see that LC0 was number two within the runner up. And uh, now I have actually looked at the code for this guy. Um, it's on GitHub, and I actually <laughs> removed the directory. But um, now this one, I think that they're not, I don't know what the exact deal is. So these might be partly proprietary and they uh, sell you the version. So kind of interesting, but kind of bad, right? So because we can't uh, download the code. So um, it's really nice to be able to see precisely. Um, and uh, certainly it would take some time. Uh, if you're the tournament director, you'd have to really understand chess computers and make sure that uh, what's going on is legitimate. 
Um, but I was really surprised at some of the uh, chess code. So, uh, so uh, the unofficial champions, those unofficial tournaments seem like they might be do done all the time. I mean, that last game was just uh, the other week was the championship or whatever for that. So they might do that all the time and just run thousands of games. And honestly, an unofficial championship may be, uh, because you can run them all the time, these computers can be playing. Problem is, uh, what if you want to use a supercomputer or cluster of computers, and what if it's more complicated than just a simple machine? Um, but honestly, what we really care about is that it can work on, say, you know, a uh, one-core or even eight-core system um, well. So uh, something like a regular PC that most people can get. Um, so uh, this is what's the World Computer Chess Championship. This has been going on since 1974, um, and you can see where it's been. So it's interesting, it's been in Macau, was the most recent one in 2019. And actually, uh, Komodo has been winning it, interestingly, right? So I would like to know, um, well, uh, where's Stockfish? And uh, it looks like Junior won prior to that quite a number of times in a row. So uh, we are going to look into the details of each one of these top ones. I'll probably even add Junior to this um, just because it's uh, been around for a little while. And you can even see that Fritz and some other ones, Crayplitz and some ones in the past here, have won. Um, and, uh, but in general, this is the uh, World, uh, World Chess Computer Championship. Now, I also noticed that uh, they have something called the World Speed Chess Championship. So I don't know what's happened here. They maybe just didn't add it, um, but you can see um, that was in Stockholm, and it may be that uh, it looked like this was also in Stockholm. So could be that they placed them at the same time. Um, International Computer Games Association. Um, so this is a, another organization that we should probably know about. So uh, this is the official website uh, for these guys, the International Computer Games Association. And I was lucky enough here to find the page for uh, the most recent tournament. So that was in China, um, in Macau. And interestingly, uh, they chose this in Macau. Macau is a gambling place. Kind of funny that they wouldn't choose Hong Kong. And I don't know, I'm, I'm a little familiar with Hong Kong and Macau. And uh, I don't know, it's... Uh, Similar, but uh, might have been nicer to have it in Hong Kong. Um, but you can see that I have the rules here and some details uh, for uh, that event. Now, I'm not sure. Uh, this is called the North American Computer Chess Championship. So um, it might be interesting just to uh, look at uh, different regions. Um, clearly, it's kind of difficult sometimes to travel somewhere else. It looks like they kind of stopped uh, a lot of this around this time, but maybe there's just, uh, uh, you know, uh, looks like it was kind of canceled here. So, uh, but certainly interesting to also know about that there's alternatives to these uh, chess, uh, these uh, champions. Um, so there is something else called a computer Olympiad, and it would be interesting. Um, you know, I think... Um, what they've been trying to do is make like a generalized uh, game playing system. Um, and you can see there's just a ton of different games um, that computers can play. And this just goes on and on. So basically, um, you know, this, this these are all these games that they got, right? So chess is one of those um, games. Um, and certainly it'd be hard to uh, play all these, but maybe not. Maybe there are some ways uh, once you know the rules. Um, so essentially it comes down to these two computers, Stockfish versus LC0 or LCO. Um, and I thought this was amazing. This is a sacrifice um, that Stockfish made and actually won. Um, so you're basically coming in here with a knight, king takes, and they go through the entire game here. You should really look at this game uh, carefully um, if you're interested. And this was part of the Chess Computer Championship for 2019. And certainly, this is one of the best games I've ever seen in my life. Um, and I've seen probably a thousand plus, right? So 
pretty awesome. It goes in a great deal of detail and this goes all the way to the very end. Um, so this is another really great game, uh, I think, in history to look at. Um, this is Alpha Zero versus Stockfish. So Stockfish is playing black here, and Alpha Zero is playing white. And you can see, <clears throat> basically, Alpha Zero has sacrificed a pawn um, in exchange for an attack. And this is only basically the beginning. So uh, basically, uh, you know, later on in this game, um, there's even more kind of uh, sacrifices kind of on white, um, which is alpha zero. So it's really amazing when you can think so far ahead. Um, and certainly this game is worth looking at. I'll show you the end of where this resulted to. So this attack eventually led to this position here. Um, and then even further on, you can kind of see, I'll try to uh, show this. Uh, so basically... Um, at this point, this is kind of the big part here. So at this point, um, this is kind of the critical part of the game to try to understand. So basically you got the two rooks, bishop and knight, and now you have a uh, stockfish being up by two pawns, uh, which is quite a lot. Um, and yet, uh, alpha zero is still trying to attack here on the white side. So actually alpha zero wins this. So being up by two pawns and still losing the game is kind of amazing when you think about it. So certainly um, worth thinking about this position in particular and trying to evaluate. Um, okay, so what would you do? Um, if you were black in this situation, you're up two pawns, um, is there something else that you can do? Um, to try to still win this. I mean, hey, if I said I'd give you two pawns, um, you know, where else can this queen go? In this particular position, uh, the queen retreats um, to try to protect uh, this kind of uh, attack um, with, uh, you know, it's not a whole lot, but, uh, but there's apparently a pretty strong attack here. So um, just building up for white. So, uh, um, so here's kind of the humans relative to what's going on. So you see 2,800 here and on this, you know, 2,800, well, we have to go back to the yellow. So if you're at 2,400, man, uh, 2,800, so that's 400, 600 points, right? 600 points, oh my God. So 600 points, God, um, you're almost at like 95% win rate, right? So basically, chess computers win 95% of the time, and a human might win 5% of the time. Um, and at that point, when you're 600 points above someone, it's hard to play the person. You're just like, geez, what's going on? So uh, interesting to see uh, essentially how uh, the best chess players in the world rank up. And I really like this page. If you click on them, you can also see some links to some of their personal links. Um, kind of cool to see Magnus's Instagram. Um, and even his Facebook, but his Instagram is a little more interesting. And you can kind of see how his rating has changed over the years. And you can see he was the first grandmaster at age like 13. So right around here, Magnus was around 13 years old. And that was basically uh, about 14 years ago, right? So, uh, but today you can kind of see the rating and you can kind of compare that to some other players. So you can see, uh, actually, even this guy went down a little bit and then all of a sudden went up. So right there was kind of a, a interesting uh, time period in his life. And you might even want to like study um, if you are uh, able to graph your own rating. These guys play a lot of games, so it's a little bit easier to... Uh, and I just edit him because he's in the Philippines. I thought he was an interesting guy. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Basically, these ratings, you can kind of plot this. It would be nice to see the chess computer ratings over time. And I think I have a video on that. Um, so this is a really popular uh, video with almost 500,000 views. And it was produced pretty recently. Um, and it kind of just shows you the graph over time. So you can see um, basically what's been happening. Um, so it kind of shows what I, already, what I already had here. But just kind of as an animation, which is pretty nice just to see. Um, so believe it or not, this is the Stockfish's 
website, the best chess computer in the world, perhaps, um, and open source. So if you go back to their main page, um, you kind of see what their main page looks like. Very simple, pretty clean. Um, and I basically just wanted to download the source code um, and start diving into it. So uh, it would be nice if Stockfish had kind of more of a Wikipedia page, but that's maybe what Wikipedia for is here. So uh, you can see Stockfish is written in C++, and then here's actually the official link. So if you're really looking for the code, you got to go to GitHub, um, and you can see they have a pretty stable release. It's just in the last few months, um, and they started uh, almost 12 years ago, I guess. Um, some of the key developers um, be interesting to uh, find out who exactly is involved. Um, and uh, basically, um, you can see uh, what's going on with them. So um, they uh, use alpha beta search and use bit boards. Um, so uh, I did kind of want to go into alpha beta search and discuss that. Um, and you can see uh, the ELL rating being at about 3516, and then plus it could be above that by 24 or below that by 20. So, and uh, this is the uh, benchmark that they're using, and uh, you can kind of see. So, um, and then a little bit of the history here um, about Stockfish. So, um, it's just overall great. Um, you can see their GitHub here. Um, and uh, under the SRC is where their source code is. So um, I did want to dive into that. I'm not sure I'm going to do that on this particular one, um, but you can see uh, essentially Stockfish. So uh, on the other side is this LC0, and it is possible to grab their stuff as well. So um, it looks a little bit more cool and interesting for some reason, the website, um, just to me. Um, and you can edit it on GitHub. It looks like they got uh, their uh, downloader here as well, and so on. So, and here is the famous Alpha Zero, um, and uh, essentially uh, this is a, a competing project. Um, it doesn't really say, you know, they don't compete this against the regular chess tournament. So it's hard to say what the current status of this is. Um, I saw another rating uh, graph, and uh, of course, Alpha Zero was very high for a moment. Um, but this project, LC Zero, was essentially supposed to be the Alpha Zero project. So it's possible that quite a bit of the source code uh, was kind of, uh, you know, the similar concepts were used. There was a research paper published in science magazine um and here's the actual research paper i'm not sure it, you know this was helpful it didn't quite get into all the details um but it gave a good overview of exactly how the uh, alpha zero works um and then there's this uh komodo which uh some people would say is the world chess champion as well so it's hard to say um but uh basically these are the top three um and uh you know it's uh um we'll maybe take a look at their website as well um but uh there's gonna there's some details that we can kind of look at in terms of how their source code this this page is kind of uh, weak actually um and uh then there's this other one called shredder that was uh, part of the world championship as well for a little time being and you can see uh perhaps they were even in uh Earlier on, this was kind of an earlier project, and today, uh, still kind of a chess software world championship, Blitz world championship. So maybe not part of the same championships as the others, but it's nice to have a few different ones. And it looks like this guy um, has probably been around for a little while. Let's picture him. I'd like to do some research on this guy. It looks like he's been working really hard on his project. And... This page, actually, I should have even talked about it at the start. So this is chessprogramming.org. Um, looked like someone was putting in just a wiki page for how to get started in chess programming for chess computers. And uh, basically, it just discuss uh, the, you know, the big ones here. 
um, and uh, kind of some other things. So, uh, you know, at this point, I'm just trying to think about what else I want to discuss here, but basically just wanted to do a main review of the uh, chess computers here. So, uh, you know, this perhaps the the main thing that was really interesting is just kind of seeing the histogram here and looking at the fine details of seeing how this kind of quickly accelerates here and actually slowly decelerates on this side. So that is the exact opposite of a human um, chart. Um, I wish I could show you that, but I've seen a chart of this and basically it's, you know, there's a lot of people on the lower side and very few people on this side. And there is more people here on this side, obviously, but just on the fine details here, it looks like this um, this drop here is perhaps the main concern. So if this was up here, you'd say, I don't know, it's a fast drop on the either side, but uh, uh, but basically um, you can see on either side of this point is kind of a major drop off and then an up and so and so. So yeah, I would say that they're trying a lot of uh, interesting things perhaps in these two groups um, of chess computers and then maybe solved a couple problems at each one of these levels. And so we could kind of say, if we were looking at the chess computers, what we'd want to do is kind of look at each one of these kind of levels and segments and kind of see. So we can kind of see that a little bit. Okay, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, studying uh, all of these top chess computers in the world. Um, I'd like to do kind of a follow-up study. Uh, it's a little late tonight to be looking into all the details of the uh, source code. I looked into it a little bit already, but I want to kind of take a deeper look uh, now that I've kind of seen all of these. Um, certainly, um, there is a lot of work in understanding uh, relatively what's going on. So particularly on this side, um, you know, we can see kind of like what makes it better. And the hard part here is that, yeah, you could also see what makes it better, but there's less and less computers to study um, as you go this way. So, um, but certainly there's little, kind of little blips in here, um, you know, somewhere along this point, you know, it might be around 28 to 2900. Um, and uh, actually it's interesting that that little blip right there is also where humans have kind of, uh, tapered off around 8, 2800, 2900. So there's a little blip here, even on the uh, chess computer side. Um, you can kind of see another similar blip here around uh, 3200. So certainly, um, but this is a huge difference between 28 and uh, so uh, we know that this, so I would definitely use this guide uh, when studying the chess computers. Uh, if you can try to get the rating, that would be helpful. Um, but certainly it would be also interesting as a follow-up study to look at alternative rating measures. Um, you know, just win-loss ratios is one way. Um, but some other way would be interesting uh, to try to think about. Um, but the rating numbers uh, do help. Um, anyway, hope you've enjoyed the study. Um, let me know what you think. Um, take a look at a variety of websites. Um, and, uh, if this one was pretty much one of the better ones I'd recommend. Um, but, uh, you certainly want to compare, um, different places. Hope, uh, you have some good questions and I'd love to work with you on a possible chess engine. If you have some ideas, um, we could uh, discuss them and particularly how to use them, uh, for a variety of, uh, uses. Hope, uh, especially, uh, uh, that you can get in contact with me. See you later.